Hi everyone, my name is Matt and welcome to my channel. Let's paint some of these Eldari Rangers for Warhammer 40k using a mix of contrast paints and traditional techniques. After assembling the models, I primed them in my favorite method beginning with gray all over, followed by a heavy spray of white from the top and sides. Then I attached the models to the corks using double-sided tape. I'm going to paint these models in a Beal Tan color scheme, with bone-colored armor and green helmets. Let's tackle the bone armor first, and begin with a layer of Skeleton Horde. Remember, when using contrast paints, you'll get a much better result if you apply plenty of paint at first to ensure it flows into all the recesses. Then wipe the brush on a paper towel, and use the brush to soak up any extra paint. With the armor base coated, it's time to move on to the cloaks. I want the cloaks to match the box art, and they have an interesting square kind of camo pattern in different shades of green. It may seem odd, but I'm going to paint the first parts of the pattern with Eshin Gray. Reference the box art if you need to, and just paint a few random square shapes of varying sizes. And to make sure there's an even finish, apply a second layer after the first one dries. With those square shapes dry, next it's time to paint some green on the cloaks with Creed Camo. Since the surface is relatively flat, it's important to apply just the right amount of paint here. We want the paint to pool and collect in some areas to create shading, but too much paint will flood the whole surface and create an uneven finish. Work on one section at a time, and use the brush to control where the paint flows and to soak up any excess. It's okay if some of the paint gets on the leather areas or weapons, but do your best to avoid getting any green on the bone armor. Any mistakes on those areas will be more difficult to correct. The green looks like it could use a second layer, and it will get one. But first I'm going to paint another part of the pattern with Ogren Camo. Make another series of squares on the cloaks, with some overlapping the squares from earlier. These squares are also a good opportunity to paint over any mistakes with the first part of the pattern, or any areas where the green dried unevenly. With the Ogren camo patterns done, now I'm going to paint one more layer of Creed camo. This will help tie all the colors together and deepen the green tones. I'm trying to control the amount of paint in this step and keep it very thin. I don't want it to pool or create shading, but rather tint all the colors beneath it. By layering the different stages in this way, we're getting only one layer of Creed camo on top of the light green squares, and we're getting two layers of Creed camo everywhere else. We'll leave that part for now and move on to the inside of the cloaks, which I'm base coating with Xandri dust. Be careful and take your time along the edge of the cloak where the two sides meet. If you make any mistakes, that's okay, just leave them for now and we can touch them up later. Next we'll shade the inside of the cloaks. I put some Steel Legion drab on my palette and thinned it slightly with water. Rather than paint it all over like a wash or a contrast paint, I'm going to apply this directly in the areas where I want it. Due to the shape of these cloaks, it's really difficult to get a clear view on camera. Check out this video here to see this technique and a few others in more detail.
We'll move on from the cloaks for now, and start base coating the leather areas using a mix of four parts wildwood and one part doom bowl brown. You may have some areas where green or another color splashed onto the leather areas, and since this color is so dark we shouldn't need to touch up the base coat first. These rangers are for an existing army that I started painting a long time ago, and the leather needs to match what I used to do. The problem is, the colors I used back then aren't made anymore, so I had to make some substitutions and come up with this mix. It doesn't matter too much, but I'll show my original recipe on the screen if you're curious. After the first coat dried, I applied a second to deepen the color. With these base coats applied, now I'm going to start painting some highlights. It may seem counterintuitive to start highlighting now before the other base coats are applied, but the next couple highlights might get messy, and I feel like I get better and cleaner results this way. Beginning with the armor, thin down some bone white with a small amount of water. I'm painting this over most of the armor and avoiding the recesses. It may take a second layer to build up a smooth finish. I want to build up the armor highlights with one more glaze, using a mix of bone white and off white. Off white on its own is a little too light, but mixing in a small amount of bone white makes it just right. Thin the paint with water, and with very little paint on the brush, add some subtle highlights to the armor. Mostly the face plate, edges of the shoulder pads, and top of the shoes. Since most of the armor is covered up by other details, this step should be pretty fast. And finally I picked out all the edges of the armor with white. I really prefer to use a white paint that's strong and opaque. Vallejo Game Color and P3 are a couple of my favorites. If you have a favorite white paint, please share it in the comments below. Next I'm going to highlight the cloaks in two stages. First is a quick, glaze-like highlight with ogre and camo. I thinned it slightly with water, and with barely any paint on the brush, I highlighted some of the lighter green squares. Try to think about the folds on the fabric and where the light is hitting it, and paint the highlights in just those areas. The goal here is a soft, subtle blend. Next we're going to do some more glaze highlights with Krieg khaki thinned with some water. With barely any paint on the brush, add some highlights near the edges and raised portions of the folds. Notice how the paint is really transparent and barely changes the color of the cloak, and that's exactly what we want. There should be very little paint on the model, and it should dry almost immediately. It shouldn't run or flow anywhere, and if it does, that means you have too much paint on your brush. Work your way around the model and highlight the cloaks, focusing on the most prominent edges. By building up a lot of thin layers like this, it will give the appearance of a blend without having to mix any colors.
The back of the cloaks are looking great, so let's move on to the inside of them. First I'm taking some black and painting the inside of the sleeves, inside the hoods, and along any edges where the cloak folds over on itself. If you have a lot of confidence with the brush, you can paint a really thin black line along the edge where the two halves meet. I want to paint a soft highlight on the inside of the cloaks, so I mixed equal parts of Zandri dust and bone white. I thinned it slightly with water and painted some thin glaze highlights on the folds, just like the highlights on the back side. A wet palette is great for these kinds of mixes. Since the paint will stay wet, you won't have to worry about having to mix the color again. Then I picked out the edges of the cloak with bone white. Now it's time to tackle the leather, and I'll be doing the first highlight in two stages. Thin some Doom Bowl Brown with water, and paint some soft highlights on the upward facing areas and near the edges. Remember that the brush will leave more paint where it last touches the model, so if you end the brush stroke in the area that you want highlighted, you can get a gradation effect. The second stage with Doom Bowl Brown is a fine edge highlight all over. For the next highlight I used Scrag Brown. I made this highlight a little more narrow than the last, going over most of the edges, but putting more emphasis near the corners. And for the final highlight, I picked out the corners with Tau Light Ochre. A little bit can go a long way, so I like to use it sparingly. I want to paint the guns black, and Eshin Grey will make a good base coat. On my last video, a viewer asked a great question about why I paint the black areas grey first. So by now the guns have a bunch of different colors splashed on them, and we have to cover that up first. Grey paint is more opaque than white, and I can get a solid coat much faster with grey. Also, the next layer will be Black Templar, and since it's a weaker strength paint, it takes a couple layers over white, and compared with grey, it only takes one. So in the end, I think the gray paint is a matter of convenience, speed, and honestly, I think it looks a little better too. After the gray paint was dry, I painted the weapons with Black Templar. Just like with any other contrast paint, wipe the brush on a paper towel and soak up any excess paint as needed.
With the Black Templar still on my palette, I painted a thin black line around the eyes and face masks, and any remaining details. When black lining, it's almost impossible to avoid spilling some black paint, so I try to angle the brush in a way to control the spillover. In this case I'm trying my best to avoid making any mistakes on the white face mask, and if some black paint spills on the rest of the helmet, that's okay since I haven't painted it yet anyway. I base coated the helmets with Warpstone Glow. This color has very poor coverage and will take two or three layers for an even finish. After I got the green paint nice and solid, I mixed some black into the green and shaded around the helmet details. Next I base coated some of the weapon details with Rune Lord Brass. Then I shaded them with Agrax Earth Shade. Now for some highlights. I started off by highlighting the edges of the black areas with Eschen Gray. Next I picked out some of the edges and corners with Dawnstone. Let's move on to the green. Take some moot green and thin it down slightly with water. Moot green is very transparent, and I'm going to demonstrate a way of getting a gradation kind of effect without any mixing. With very little paint on the brush, paint a line along the edge, a little wider than you'd normally paint it. Notice how there's barely any paint being deposited on the model, and it dries almost immediately. Since it's very transparent, the base color is showing through. Then, make a second pass along the same line, but paint it slightly more narrow. Finally, paint a third line along the edge, as narrow as you can make it. On really small details, you can get away with just one highlight, using undiluted paint. I 
I want to paint one last highlight on the green, so I mixed in some toxic yellow with the moot green, about equal parts, and I painted it on the sharpest edges and corners. A little bit can go a long way, so make sure to paint this highlight sparingly. Next I highlighted the edges of the brass areas with a mix of Runelord brass and Stormhost silver. Canoptic alloy is pretty close, but I prefer using the mix. Use whichever one you're comfortable with. I want to go with purple for the gems and eyes, and I'll be using an older method of painting them, beginning with a base coat of black. Then I painted Phoenician purple over most of the gem, concentrating more of the paint near the bottom. I thinned the paint a little bit and applied it in two layers, similar to how I highlighted the green armor earlier. Next I painted a mix of Warlord purple and Phoenician purple on the lower half of the gems, again trying to concentrate more of the paint near the bottom. I used Warlord purple on its own next, making a crescent shape along the bottom third of the gem. I mixed a little white into the Warlord purple, and added a slightly smaller crescent inside the last one. And finally I added a dot of white on the top, and a very thin line of white in the crescent shape at the bottom. I painted the eyes using the same colors, except I skipped over the first purple mix. Usually I find that I can skip over some of the mid-tones if the area is small enough. There are a few spots left on the model that I want to match the bone armor, and I base coated those with bone white. They're small enough that I won't bother with a shade. After the bone white dried, I painted a small dot of black inside the details on the back. I glazed the top half of the details with the bone white and off-white mix from earlier in the video. Then I picked out the edges with white. I used an old brush to apply wood glue to the bases, then I sprinkled on a few pieces of coarse gravel, and then dipped the base in fine sand. After the glue dried, I painted the entire base with watered down black paint, followed by a heavy dry brush of Rhinox hide. 
then a dry brush of Mornfang brown, followed by Baylor brown. I painted the rocks with Dawnstone and shaded them with Agrax Earthshade. I dry brushed the rocks with Dawnstone, followed by a mix of Dawnstone and Bone White. I painted the edge of the base with Rhinoxide, and after that dried, I applied a few patches of static grass with super glue. The camo cloak pattern was a lot of fun to paint, and I think it really complements the rest of the models. I really enjoy using a variety of techniques as well. Some models benefit from one painting technique more than others. One technique may be faster and look better on one part of the model, and it may be a better idea to use a completely different technique on another section. Are there any techniques you want to improve on? Which techniques would you like to see more of? Leave a comment below and I'll do my best to address them in a future video. If you haven't done so yet, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Well that's it for now, thanks for watching, and until next time, happy painting!